good fam it's your girl flow girl and i'm back with another video <laughs> i'm just kidding guys i am super stoked i'm very excited about this series i am doing a series on relationships now those who know me y'all know i have such an interest in relationships all relationships and i just feel like it's time i talk about it it's time i bring it up it's time we discuss this thing you know what i'm saying like get into the depths of how this thing works and yeah so i am gonna do this series i've actually planned three seasons of the series so there's a lot to talk about and i just hope that it grows man i hope that you guys will be interested to hear what i have to say i'm also interested in what you guys have to say so make sure you comment down below because i really 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 want to know you know i don't have i haven't had the perfect examples um in terms of perfect relationships to be quite honest i don't think there's such a thing as a perfect relationship but um who knows maybe one of you has one so maybe you guys can school me okay but um yeah so i'm gonna touch on various things i'll share a lot from my personal experience um so if you guys want to hear the juice you want to get some tea from me then make sure you just subscribe and subscribe hit the notification bell and of course like every video so I know that you're actually interested in what I have to say today's video as you can see from the title actually I want to give you guys um, a background of where I'm coming from in terms of my experience so I was married um, I am no longer uh, I don't quite classify myself as a divorcee some could say that that's entirely up to you but um, yeah so today I'm just gonna explain kind of what happened how I got to where I am and then the other episodes we're going to discuss like um, a bit more detail I want to dive into like for example episode 2 is definitely going to be red flags what are the things that you pick up which you sometimes ignore ladies um, you know which you shouldn't be ignoring because those are things that actually are gonna affect you in the long term you know what I mean so yeah we'll, we'll dig into the details later cool so in 2012 I got engaged in fact I started dating in January 2012 Dating this gentleman, I will not mention his name because I don't think it's necessary. Those who know, if you know, you know, you know, if you know, you know, okay. January 2012, started dating. December 2012, got engaged. December 2013, pay Lobola. Now, those who don't know what Lobola is, um, it's like dowry. Okay, so bride price basically um so yeah you guys need to know that i was in a long distance relationship this whole time yep the whole time he was in a different country so we used to just like spend a lot of time traveling seeing each other and stuff like that i must say he traveled the most um he just felt that he should be the one who takes on that journey that's cool but yeah we spent a lot of time traveling and a lot of time apart as well as you can imagine because it ain't free y'all okay traveling is not free and it's not overnight either we both have jobs we both have lives we both have things that we're doing but we're trying to like do this thing of getting married so to cut a long story short it took five years for him to move now understand that we did not want to get married and then still go to our different homes or different countries we wanted to get married and be living in one country which is why we hadn't gotten married in terms of formally we did one third of a three-part process the way we understand it the way i understand it the first part which is the lobola which is bringing the families together recognizing honoring parents um hence the paying of lobola um and of course because we're getting married we are bringing two families together so that was the whole idea of uh the first third okay but because we are christians you know and as a believer the important part was part two which is to do this thing before god okay get married before god so we needed to have a pastor there to bless this marriage and then part three is of course to be recognized by the state in other words legally signing and getting married so letting the state know that i'm officially the missus and he's officially the mister and we are married to each other so we did the lobola which is part one of a three-part process the way we understood it okay now that part was done and dusted everything was great 
So we went to our various homes in our various cities, in our various countries. <laughs> and, but we had agreed that the goal now is to make sure we live in one house. Well, one country, actually. We wanted to live in one country. So that was the focus at that point. Not so much the wedding or anything like that. So yeah, so it took until 2017 for him to finally make it to South Africa. And that was a long wait. It was a long, long, long wait. But anyway, I did it. Didn't cheat. Part of myself. I must say though, I kept very busy, okay? Tips and tricks for people in long distance relationships. If you don't want to cheat, you don't want to find yourself in places you shouldn't be, keep yourself busy. I happened to keep myself busy with work. One, I kept myself busy with ministry. At that time, those who know, Creation Waits, Creation Waits, Flo Girl, J Dot, B Kendall, Freesty, we were like all over the place. Like people were inviting us left, right, and center. PG-13, what's up? Solid community, what's good? You know, we were everywhere. And I'm grateful for that because it kept me focused on God, focused on my, my, my spiritual growth, kept me focused on work, you know? And, and I just didn't have time for nonsense, basically. So yeah, so he arrived 2017 and um, the agreement was that he'd be with me for the first well, however long. The idea was that he would stay with me until he settled into his new job and saved up enough to move into his own place. Now, a lot of people didn't understand why we did that. We wanted to have a relationship where we can date, we, he can come fetch me, we can go for a movie night, we can go for dinner, we can go for couple trips. All the things we missed out on in that five year period where we were not together. So we wanted that. But the idea is that within that year, we're planning our wedding. So the wedding is being planned. Nothing's going to be missed. The idea is that it's from one year from the time he moved, um, we must have our white wedding, basically. Okay. So, yeah. That's when it got real. <laughs> because um, you don't know someone until you live with them. You know, I think... Um, Long distance can be very deceiving because you have your ideas, you have your perceptions of a person and yeah, okay, they might come over for the visits for like a few days or whatever, but everyone's on their best behavior, let's be honest. And so you, when you live with a person, you really learn who they are. And remember, we are at this point well past our thirties and what happens is that as an adult, you get into a routine. You um, you live a certain way, you eat a certain way, you eat at a certain time, you go out at a certain time, you hang out with certain people. You've become a whole entire person outside of your partner. And so now bringing the two of you with your stern heads and your idea of how you live and trying to accommodate each other is not always easy not to say it's impossible but it's not easy okay so this is why i say like it was quite difficult um but you know because we've been friends for so long i don't know if i mentioned but like i, I met this person in 2000 so at this point i've known this person for like 17 years okay so <laughs> yeah Ooh, okay so um he moved out we we're both like cool okay space but let's ease into being together. So, yeah, I just noticed that in his finding a new job, trying to do good at work, plus I was still in my busy routine, that we lost a lot of time together. We we're not spending as much time together anymore, especially since he moved. He would work late, get home late, and I used to sleep really early because I used to wake up really early, go to the gym, whatever, and it was just like, we were just missing each other like a lot. So one of the uh, things that I, because I saw it was becoming a real problem, I'm saying it very lightly right now, but it was becoming a serious problem that I just said, I just prayed about it. I said, God, you know what? They th we need to start doing things together. And one of the things that I felt would be good was if we go to the same church. Now we did not go to the same church. I went to Solid, like I said, shout out to Solid. And he went to Rivers, um, River Santon. So he wasn't gonna move to my church. 
and i was like well okay well then i'll move to yours but we need to be in one place there's no other way prayed about it got it okay you need to go you can go um first of january to basically 2018 I prayed about it, I gave it to my leaders at church, they prayed about it, they released me, so I went the proper way, I didn't just ditch my church, guys, I love you, just know that, solid community church, I love you guys, okay, so, um, come January 2018, I'm going to a new church, completely very different from my church, which I'm used to, which is much smaller, more intimate, and all of that stuff, but great church as well, like really amazing stuff. I, I'm actually still a member. In fact, I am a member. Yeah, um, like I said, the whole idea was that we start going to church together. And if I tell you that from January up to June, July, I think we went to church together, I don't know, all of twice. The other times were like excuses. Oh, I'm busy. Oh, I'm coming. I'm late. They've closed the gates. I can't be there. Oh, there was always some excuse. So, not to say that that's when the my sort of antenna went off, because I will talk about the red flags in the next episode. But this was a huge thing for me because. I'm Christian, I have my values, I need the man that I'm going to marry to prioritize God without fail. I will not compromise on that because I acknowledge that the husband is the head of the house. Therefore, I expect the head of the house to know how to follow and in this case to follow God. If I cannot trust that you are listening to God or prioritizing God, it's highly unlikely that you and i are going to get along therefore we will not have a good marriage so this was a really big thing for me um and i brought it up many times and as i said there were always reasons which seemed valid but the bottom line is you're not at church it's not like you go to another service you just wouldn't go so i started testing like how are we making decisions um and i started doing a lot of questioning I asked him a lot, like, when are we getting married? We haven't started planning a wedding. Let's go for premarital counseling. The church would, would always put up notices to say, you know, premarital counseling call is starting this day, register now, no, no, no. And I'd always say, ooh, ooh. He, you know, we missed the last one, let's do this one. And there was always a reason why it couldn't happen. So I really started to realize that this person's probably not ready to get married, actually. And from the things I'm seeing, as I said, various things, other things which we'll discuss at a later date. Um, hmm, I don't think that this is what I want. So I started praying about exiting, my exit strategy. I was no longer praying about should I, should not, because I've been praying about that for a long time before then. This was just like the time where I was like, okay, yeah, look, no. So I made sure that I had the discussions I needed to have, questioned what I needed to question, present solutions where I could, but I think we were just not hearing each other. And I think that he was changing as a person and I too was changing as a person, but we were not changing into people that matched. So um, the Wednesday before I ended, I ended it on a Saturday. Um, the Wednesday before I ended it, I went to see my previous pastor because we're still very close. So I was still very much connected to my previous church and I spoke to my pastor and I told him what I'm planning to do and pray for me and just I, I just need to be sure that I'm not making a mistake and all of that. Even though I kind of decided like I was done, <laughs> you know? But I needed God to release me. I specifically asked God to release me from this thing because I didn't want to fight with him or with his family or with my family. I didn't want to, I just didn't, I didn't want war. I wanted peace. So he prayed and there were a few, few prophetic words that came out and uh, basically God answered my prayer. I'm not going to get into the details of that, but God answered my prayer and released me from this thing. So I knew that, okay, this is good to go. So come Saturday, I called him and said, look, I need to see you. I need to come chat. And he didn't like to hear that. But nonetheless, 
I didn't care at that point. Took my ring off and put it in the box. And I went to see him quite late. I remember it was around 9 p.m. And I just said, you know, I don't, I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. And I knew in my spirit that he didn't want it either, but he would never say. Um, so I knew he wouldn't fight for me or for us or anything. He just asked like why, but I mean the, the most like, like, like I'm saying why because I have to tick the box, but that's, I didn't feel like it was genuine and I didn't even answer him and he didn't care to follow up. So my point exactly. So yeah, so I ended that and literally it was, I wasn't there for 15 minutes. There was no fighting. There was no discussion. I wasn't asking him for permission to leave. I was announcing that I'm out. So yeah, then I spoke to his family pretty much the week that followed and just let them know that I've made this decision and I'm out. And nobody fought me, um, nobody questioned me. Um, they were obviously not happy, but they understood because who in their right mind waits for six years for someone who is not planning to marry you that's okay anyway so yeah that's how that ended so like i said guys that's basically what i wanted to get at today i wanted to just let you guys know about my story and kind of how that worked out um but like i said we're going to discuss the juice in the next episode so again make sure you like subscribe and comment below i would like to know who else has been in a similar situation who else has broken up with someone you know um that they've been either married to or engaged to am i alone in this world am i the only one who left something i felt like was not right um and like what is the main reason for you that you left so yeah Mwah! chat to you guys in the comment section i promise to respond but make it easy for me talk to me okay i'll see you guys in the next episode i have a good week your girl flow girl <laughs>